5月の8日に入ったんですからもう9ヶ月になります。I've been here since May 8th, so more than nine months. We're cared for very well, and I'm very grateful for that. But sometimes I feel I need some space to walk around a bit. It's all very confined here. Setsuko Kasuya is still adjusting to her new life. For decades, Ms. Kasuya worked in her restaurant above her house across the street from the beach in Shichigahama. The small fishing town was once famous for its yacht club and scenic coastline. But that all changed after the earthquake and tsunami last year. The tsunami completely destroyed my house. In the first floor, only the frame was still standing. The second floor was still left, but the water also came in there. Everything was messed up. Now, Ms. Kasuya lives in a makeshift housing complex in the center of town. Almost a year after the disaster, she's one of some 300,000 people in northeastern Japan who are still displaced and mostly living in prefab housing quickly built by the government. Many are senior citizens who have no firm plans for the future. Residents here say their basic needs are being met, but life in the temporary quarters can be challenging. Space is tight and the walls are thin, so there's not much privacy. And there's the constant stress of not knowing what the future may bring. What keeps Ms. Kasuya going is a group called Yarn Alive. It was started by Teddy Salka, an American missionary who lives in Shichigahama. It's called Yarn Alive because someone said, let's call this Circles of Hope. But I said, I don't think yarn's going to give hope to many people, but it might keep them alive. Because all I could think was all the old grannies laying in their rooms, now out of the shelter and in the temporary housing and just by themselves again. And what would they do? Nothing to do. And then I thought, If I didn't have something to do with my hands, I would go crazy. So they might be the same. So we came over here and said, if, I, if we brought yarn and needles and scissors and all the things you need, would you like to do it? And they said, well, we'll practice. We'll, we'll try. About 20 women get together every Tuesday at the recreation room to knit and chat and comfort one another, one stitch at a time. If you stay at home all alone, you start thinking about things you don't want to think about. At first, I was busy cleaning up. There was so much to do. But after a while, that was all done. My house was completely destroyed. In the past, I used to knit sweaters for myself and for the children. But everything was destroyed by the tsunami. Here they have given me knitting needles and yarn, and it makes me feel so happy to be able to knit again. Now the town faces the daunting task of starting over. A third of Shigahama was wiped out, including the fishing industry. Rebuilding from scratch will cost millions of dollars. Officials are also trying to figure out how to compensate people for the land they lost so they can move to a location on higher ground. Ms. Kasia isn't sure what her plans are yet. She yearns for another house, just like the one she used to live in, but she worries it will cost too much to rebuild. She could move in with her daughter, but that would mean leaving the town where she grew up. For now, she relies on her knitting and her friends to cheer her up. <laughs> When I'm knitting and chatting with everyone all day, I feel so good that I don't feel lonely at night. When I go home, I just start knitting again. For the Wall Street Journal, this is Yumiko Ono in Shichigahama, Japan.